Uh, my name is Michael Henry, and I am just tickled pink to be talking about collaboration, especially collaboration in the electronic world. And this is not a lecture we are going to discuss because that's what I came here to do. I didn't come here to talk about collaboration. I came here to talk about what you're doing and talk about what I'm doing and, and then find ways of doing it even better. Uh, if you have a laptop, we are going to be doing everything in Wimba. And one of the reasons is, is I've got some examples of how we do things in the online class that, that you can only see in Wimba. So you'll see the slides, which are a little bit smaller than they would be if it was full screen. But hopefully you'll be able to read them, and I tried to make them as readable as possible. So feel free to go to the blackboard.umkc.edu site, log in. And we've already got Terry in there, and I think Jerry's going to be joining in just a little bit. So uh, we'll at least have two guinea pigs. So uh, basically, this is uh, uh, what I'm going to do is use my web communications class. It's basically a mediated communications class as a case discussion for e-collaboration. But what I'm trying to do is plant the seed so that you'll talk about your collaborative techniques that you use in your classes. So really this is just not just about this class, but it's to look at how I use it and then you talk say, gosh, I did that years ago. That's, that's obsolete. Now we're doing something else. Uh, let me tell you just a little bit about me first. I started out in television and I started out producing, uh, producing adult education television primarily for PBS. And I turned 53, so I was back in the days of television when the cameras were, you know, like this, and the tape was like that, and the lights were like that. And, um, but basically, I was always frustrated because I would, I would be making these videos where it says, now open your workbook to page 25, and do the little activity at the bottom of page 25, and then restart the tape. And frankly, it got so frustrating that I finally said, what the heck, there's got to be something else to do. Interactive video discs were coming into play, and then, thank God, the internet was coming into play. But it was very hard to push media at that time. So I was very much interested in using the, using the internet solely for education and keeping um, media really highly involved in the, in the internet. And thank God, we're really getting to the point where we can push video out very well. Um, that's a whole other story. Okay, collaboration from my perspective is, we love using the word collaboration. We love using that word over and over and over again. And frankly, it's hard, the business community uses it over and over and over again. They talk about, you know, trying to get people to work on teams and such. But if you read the literature, there's a lot of failure that happens in collaboration, not only in the business world, but also in the educational world. Um, there are lots of wonderful advancements in terms of technology, enterprise solutions, a lot of web-based solutions for collaboration and for, for, uh, for uh, web-based collaboration in terms of internet intranets, uh, also synchronous and asynchronous solutions. But we still are missing an element to make it really take fire. And uh, the, the problem is, is that we have a lot of, at, at least I've seen, and I'm sure you have too, there are people out there who have fear and uncertainty about what this is all about. How do I do this? How do I get an A when I'm collaborating with other people in a team? How many of you have heard that? Uh, cultural concerns, there are, there are a mismatch of cultures when we're dealing with a lean, especially when we're dealing with online teams. We're dealing with a lean communication technology where we don't have the richness of the face-to-face -face world. How do we get those cultural cues when we're communicating with each other? So those are some of the, the issues. And in terms of uh, why collaboration fails, and this is my smallest type on the screen, so I'm going to come up here and read it because I can hardly see it from, from here. Uh, so basically, lack of, of uh, common vision. Uh, failure to, of, of getting the projects planned properly, uh, formation of uh, collaboration only for real reasons of self-interest rather than an interest of the whole, looking for my, what am I getting out of this, which doesn't really create a team, uh, collaboration incompatibility with the mission and values of the group or the school or the organization, uh, insufficient res resources to meet the goal, time, 
uh, agenda is not member driven, which I think is a very important part about setting that, setting that design for a good collaborative experience. Uh, inadequate planning, lack of progress on interim victories, you know, sort of the, those benchmarks, uh, loss of uh, commitment to the goal, and then change in coalition or member organization priorities. We have people that go into virtual teams in a class and then they drop out of the class. The student, if we don't report that to the students in the group real quick, there's a complete, uh, uh, they've lost their mission for uh, that organization. So, Basically, in the class, the uh, new media communications class that I teach, which is, is totally online, the, uh, the, the goal is for teams in the class to explore the issues of mediated communication, and then what they learn in mediated communication is supposed to be put into a learning game. And frankly, that's about a, as much explanation as I give them. And there are lots of people who freak out with not that much explanation. But basically, I will show some examples of learning games and uh, help people understand what, what they're supposed to do. This is their final project. I encourage them the first day of class to start the final project, as we all do. But it's always a crunch at the end of the semester. Um, let's see if I Oh, here we go. And um, so what, what I try to do is run through uh, and really help them to focus on the process of communication rather than the product. I try to let them know that I not the, the product does not need to be a flashy, wonderful game. What I'm most interested in is their experience in negotiating, collaborating, and building the game together. So it's the tools, the, the collaboration tools are not important. They could use any tools they want to. And I see that um, Jerry has joined our little group. If other people want to join, feel free to go to the Blackboard site and you can join the Wimba classroom. So the communication process is the key to this whole experience. Um, what I do is design an environment, hopefully with enough, enough kindling wood, and enough big fuel and enough structure so that it takes off on its own. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes it takes off and sometimes it doesn't. And I'm actually interested in the times that it doesn't because what, what is happening? Why didn't it happen? Um, we also deal with uh, communication theory, the SRAM models, the other, other models, and we talk about you know, how, why communication is important in these mediated experiences. And then I think most importantly is I try at the beginning of the semester to say, I am not the teacher for this class. My job is the fac to facilitate your discussion. I am going to watch what you're doing and I'm going to come in only when you either ask me or when I see that you need some guidance. Otherwise, I'm going, I've set up the environment and it's your turn to. That's the reason the no hands. Basically, we stand at the side and watch how this happens after setting up the, the environment for collaboration. We also use directed discussions, and I, I bring this up because I know many of you know about this issue. When you have a, uh, I'm sorry, I, I'm, I'm in television enough to know that I'm making you work, which is okay. I kind of like that, actually. Um, uh, the direct the discussions can get off track. They can become bitch sessions, I'm sorry for my language. They can, they can become social <laughs> dating sites. <laughs> you know, if you don't have enough uh, structure to a discussion, you're in trouble. So all of the discussions in the online course that I use have a question and they start with a question. And then what I do is I monitor it to see whether the question is getting off base. If it does get off base, I do jump in and, and I will actually remove posts if I'll talk to the people who posted it. So that's what a dir directed discussion is. And then after all that's set up, I, don't, I do, don't do any more. When I first started teaching online, it was the hardest thing in the world because I felt like every single day I had 25 different emails about what am I supposed to do, how am I supposed to do this. It was much more work than teaching in a face-to-face -face fashion. However, through my experience, through reading and experience and talking to folks like you, 
I have begun to design the online course so that it is uh, a, almost a living thing with the interaction of the students and not so much the interaction of me. Uh, my job is really just guide at the side. Okay, collaboration tools out there, social networking site collaboration um, is, I mean, this is just obvious in the sense that, that social networking is a wonderful tool for collaboration. And the good news is that in education, we've had these tools for a long time. Blackboard, frankly, is a Web 2.0 kind of technology. And we've been experimenting, we've all been experimenting with this for some time. So the issue of using software to promote collaboration is something that, we're, that is not completely for, foreign to us. Um, uh, so the tools in Blackboard that, are, that I like, although you may have other tools that you like in a, in an, a learning management system that promote collaboration, is the group pages. On the group pages, there are areas for a group discussion board where they can just put, I don't monitor those discussions. They can say whatever they want. I set up one discussion for the group and then they can, they can do whatever they want in the group because that's really part of their agenda setting. Um, file exchanges and then they can send emails either to the individuals on the group or the entire group. The other thing we use the group page for is to help them identify roles and responsibilities on the team, which is an important factor. People need to understand who's doing what. And that's part of the agenda setting process is they decide themselves who's going to do what on their teams. And then uh, in the threaded discussion, as I mentioned, they just use it however they want to for collaboration. And then we also do encourage people to share their personality. I'm very much into social presence theory and the idea in an online world that there's a human being on the other side of a communication sometimes gets lost in 140 characters. And so what, I tr what we try to do in this course is to help people understand who the personalities are behind what they're saying. And I encourage them to link some of their communications to their personality so that people understand that we've got a social interaction that's happening. Okay, so uh, syllabus, as most, most of you know, is highly important to online classes. And I mention that only because uh, anytime someone has a question, that's where I direct them. The syllabus uh, is, is the roadmap for, for any online class as far as I'm concerned. I'm going to do two things. The first thing I'm going to do is just uh, talk very briefly about this class, and then we're going to do a little exercise, and then we're going to have a discussion about collaboration. In, in, the, um, in the class, we have, I divided into four modules, communication techniques and technologies, searching and researching uh, strategies and also link, there was somebody here from the library. Who's here from what? Several people from the library, isn't that great? I always say physically go put your butt in a chair in the library and then talk to a librarian because we're kind of, we have to keep encouraging people to go to the libraries because they, they have a tendency to kind of set, step back and not understand the relevance of actually going to the library. You know virtually or face to face. So I will give you a kiss later. Uh, thanks for being here. Internet evaluation techniques. We also talk uh, frequently one of the problems that we tried to solve with this class was people were using information on the internet and not citing sources properly, not verifying the content, not having some uh, idea of the credibility of the source of information. So that's one of the things we deal with in the class also is, is credibility and verifying the information. Um, and then also the issue of uh, social interaction. Okay, so now I'm going to do a little learning game just very quickly and this will give you a sense of how the learning game works in the, in the online class. And we've got with us and unfortunately, we only have two players, but that's okay. We've got Jerry and Terry. And so the, the rules of the game, and the, the team makes their own, the team decides on the game. It could be a word twist, a crossword puzzle, a Jeopardy game, a who wants to be the millionaire, 
I've had people do a football game where they answer a, a question and it goes forward. If they get it wrong, they go back. Uh, family Feud. They all pick these. They pick, pick the game. They must make the rules, and they must make the rules communicate the rules clearly about what's going to happen, and then they have the game. So the rules are, and this is for Jerry and, and Terry, type your answer in the chat window, play individually, no speaking of answers, spoken answers will not be accepted. For those of you folks not logged on, answer, with a quick, answer the quick question to be selected to play, uh, the first person to answer correctly will play for the board. So in other words, I'll ask a short little question, maybe a yes or a no, or a simple question. Type in your response to that question. The first one to type in the response gets the ability to, to guess a character on the board. Then when you guess a character on the board, you guess one letter at a time. If there are more letters on the board, you get another turn. If you don't, it goes to the other person. The first person to correctly state the phrase during your turn wins. It's a famous expression, and it has to do with credible information. Okay, ready to begin? Here we go. Can I tell them where the chat window is? The, oh, the chat window. <laughs> do you see the, the chat window right down here? Yeah. Oh, Jerry did not want to be at a disadvantage. <laughs> okay, first uh, quick question is, ready your keys on the keyboard. What color is the sky today? And we see Terry, blue. Okay, so Terry, guess a letter on the board. T. What was that? T. T. Oh my goodness. Do you know the answer to this? <laughs> and unfortunately, <laughs> T goes right there. Okay, so T. We've got a T, and actually we need a different color for the... Oh my Okay, there's a T. Okay, I don't know if you see. I'm going to put another T up there because it's hard to see. Okay, T. Oh, and actually, we've got also a T here. Okay. Okay, so there's two T's. Next. Uh, yeah, you know what? I'll tell you what. I'm working at a horrible disadvantage. Who who lent me this keyboard? This the computer. Somebody right here. It, it, I, I use a mouse pad, and this is, has the little the joystick, and I'm totally at a loss. But uh, I don't know if you can tell. It looks like I'm totally drunk here. Uh, so, okay, T. There's another T there. And let me see if I can't. I mean, I can't make it bigger, but not here. So, T. Okay, what's another letter you'd like to guess? R. Oh, my goodness. She knows the answer. What was that? Okay, that's, there's two R's. Okay, two R's. Go ahead. Can you buy an E? <laughs> what was that? I'm going to guess U. Oh, see, she knows the answer. And I'll tell you what, after you don't torture us any further, after I put this other U up, okay, and feel free to... Do you know the answer? There's a no spoken answers. No spoken answers, Bob. We're gonna just have to put you out in the hallway. T R U and then a blank U T. Do you want to guess another letter? Okay. What was that? Oh, you know what? And I missed a letter. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, you caught me. Okay. Now we know. Okay. Unfortunately, when the game, when the team plays the game, the team that pr to provides the game, they have several different people. One person's doing the technology, so one person be typing in, another person would be doing the speaking, another piece person be doing the scorekeeping. I can't do it, obviously. Do you know the answer? <laughs> you can, you can, you've got a lifeline there, so go ahead and... <laughs> oh, trust but verify. 
Yay, let's hear it for our contestant. Give her a round of applause. My goodness gracious, trust but verify. And um, it's that, that expression that Ronald Reagan kept using, which is a, a Russian proverb, uh, trust but verify. And I actually use a Wip, uh, Wikipedia citation. There's a lot of students that actually say, I cannot use Wikipedia. My professor said don't use Wikipedia. Well, if, they, if you say don't use Wikipedia, don't use Wikipedia. But Wikipedia can be a valid source, especially if you go and look and find it other sources that have the same material, as long as you cite it correctly, etc. So, okay, that's a little example of, of a, a learning game, and we use several different learning games. I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring up, uh, actually, I won't go, I'm just going to continue here. Let's see if I can, oh, I keep pushing the wrong button. Okay, so groups and telework. Um, okay, so create a community of inquiry, uh, support, support the progression, but simply hands off, facilitate team building relationships, and then what I do in this class is I ask them afterwards to reflect on the communication process. And frankly, the paper is their primary assessment for the course. That's their final project. And what they're supposed to do is a draft at mid-semester, where they talk about how the team is progressing and then they take that draft and they refine it into uh, recommendations and analysis of how they communicated, how they used communication tools, and then ultimately uh, recommendations for other mediated teams. How should other mediated teams communicate in a successful fashion? So that's really really it. Um, you know, I help people understand terms of the process, but I really don't get involved in, uh, in the process of putting together the team. I help people understand that team is not a group responsibility, but that it's actually an individual responsibility for team goals, and that the team comes up with, uh, the, sets the agenda, and um, that's really about it. So, um, what I want to do now is really turn the tables and um, talk to you just a little bit about the kinds of collaboration uh, resources that you use or the kind of collaboration that you use in your situation. So I don't even know what time it is. Does anybody know? No. So we have about maybe 20 minutes or so for a nice little discussion and chat, and I'm going to facilitate. What that means is I'm going to set the ground rules, which is no insults, you know, uh, and, um, and no sharing of personal activities, although I should tell you that I'm leaving on an airplane today for Argentina this afternoon, and um, I want to find out what other countries people are interested in going, uh, what other countries do people visit, just share. New Zealand, Italy, Italy. No. where? Finland, Finland. Australia, Australia. China, China. Germany, Japan, Japan. Austria. Austria, everybody else just loves the United States. Uh, what was that? The Ozarks. Ozarks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's, at this point, I would love to hear from you folks. Number one, I'd love to, to hear if there is anything in here that you feel something you might be able to use in a class that you have, and I'd like to hear about how you might want to be, might be interested in using that. I'd also be interested in what tools, and really one of the other rules that we set is this is a mediated team, which means that you should imagine that you're 6,000 miles away, and you cannot sit down face to face and talk that would not be a mediated team. <laughs> that would be a face-to-face -face team. So what kinds of electronic tools do you use to promote collaboration within your classrooms? I have a question first. Where do you get those games? Yeah. They make them up. Right, but they just build them? Like yeah. That? So there's a template for it. That, well, that, one, that one came from a template, yes, and as long as they cite, I tell them, as long as you cite where you got the template, as you, if you say, I made this uh, Alex Trebek game where he has animation and he's clapping his hands, or, or Vina White is clapping her hands in an animation that looks like it took about you know, three months to make, as long as they say they didn't make it and they got the template from somewhere else, that's fine if they say where they got it. 
know, right. How do you how are you using collaboration in your classrooms? What kinds of tools are you using that you find really successful? We use a lot of Blackboard in our course right now, but we're exploring other options, maybe with these or blogs. But um, traditionally for our online courses that's one of the many ways that we use a collaboration tool. Lori, let me ask you a question about that too, because this is something I'm beginning to come around to. Originally, I didn't make a group Blackboard uh, Wimba site. Are you having students control their own Wimba site, or is it just? Uh, at this, there are points in a course where they do, when they're doing presentations, but for the most part, the course is not controlled by the students. Wimba is not controlled by the students. It's controlled right. by the faculty. See, I think I'm coming down to maybe as as just as I give them the, their discussion area, mm -hmm. is give them a, a Wimba classroom that they use just for their for their group. We've set that up. We have done that, um, but the students really didn't utilize it. They felt more. I mean, it's a little bit different <coughs> type of course as well. I mean, we have limited number of students, and it's in a professional program, so it's not one of your general education courses where you have lots and lots of people in the course. This is a smaller number kind of deal. Um, but they found other ways of communicating easier than doing it. I understand. And actually I don't tell them they have to use the communication tools in Blackboard because they could use IM chat. Out, Google, Google has a lot of great communication tools. Why not just, and all I tell them to do is report what communication tools they use. And that's the other agenda setting that they have for their particular groups, is they decide themselves what communication tools they're going to use. Now I'll tell you that, the, it, I, I'll be honest, it, it, it's not always successful. I have two teams that will take this ball and run with it, and they'll do a fantastic job. And I have other teams that flounder the entire semester. And I'm trying to just figure out, and uh, I'm not experimenting, but I'm trying to figure out, is it personality? What are, the, what are the ingredients that are making some teams really succeed in exactly the same environment as other teams that don't? And as long as in their paper they talk about their failure and what happened in their failure, they can still get an excellent grade in the class because the process is the important thing and not the product. But it's that, it's that process of, I also believe from my personal perspective that we're still so at the beginning of all of this. This is an evolutionary process that we don't really understand where it's going to go. Uh, how many of you folks have seen Second Life? You know, why couldn't we have these teams work in Second Life? They could. Why not be even more virtual than that, you know, with, with video conferencing? You know, we're at the very beginning, and people are just dealing with how do I log on to Blackboard? You know? So we're, we're really at the beginning of all of this in terms of, of using these collaboration tools. However, my opinion is we have to understand as educators, this is, I'm going to get on my soapbox just for one little moment. We have to understand as educators how to use these tools first before the commercial enterprise does because we need teachers to be at the forefront for using communication technology for teaching rather than someone who's out there to get a buck. Because frankly, they could make it look beautiful, but it doesn't teach. We need to figure out how to make these tools teach and then help the business people understand, you know, they can make the platforms, but we need to make the teaching. Just a couple things. I've, I've been to a couple academic conferences and the, the speaker couldn't for some reason get there like one was a weather storm and the other was something else and they actually just dialed in virtually and I you know I know businesses are already using that technology but it gives you access to a wider variety of information and knowledge sharing that I think that we're not we're not even tapping into in education and I think that that's something that 
we need to explore further. It's just something I thought was really cool. And, um, and I know of one school that's actually using Second Life and having their students go in and do poster presentations. And, <coughs> and I think it's just awesome, some of the things that are going on. Great. Like other, uh, other, uh, other ways you use technology for c collaboration. Or, Lori, go ahead. And <laughs> thought when you're talking about, you know, we need to know how to use this. One of the things that we have identified or what we've found is the students are very, students today seem to be very, very technologically savvy at utilizing the socializing mechanisms of the World Wide Web, but they don't necessarily have a good understanding of the technical components of how does the technology work? So when we get our program is totally online, we get them. They're very, for the most part, really good about texting and you know going to YouTube, Facebook, and communicating that way. But not necessarily do they have a very good understanding when we're getting into the nuts and bolts of how do you manipulate and move your way through being able to um, work through this on program online. And so there's a real, and we've also found that our students tend to overestimate their computer skills beyond the networking piece of it. And so we're oftentimes playing catch up or trying to iron out all the kinks that they don't understand how the computer works, what kind of bandwidth they need, blah, 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 in order to be able to facilitate the online learning. Exactly right. And I don't know if that's something anybody else is doing. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, and along those lines, I think they're, they don't understand the art of communicating in this kind of a forum exactly. online. Cause exactly. Because it's totally different to communicate texting or exactly. I am. I mean, I text with my 14-year-old. It's very different than, than communicating with my students in exactly. an online platform. And I think yeah. sometimes teaching them those. Exactly. They all come to class and knowing how to do email. Right. But when they send out an email to their team saying, okay folks, I understand this is our job for the semester, we're all supposed to work together and they get no response, mm -hmm. right. I say to them, why do you think you didn't get any responses? What is it about what you communicated that didn't resonate with the people that you had on the other end? I don't tell them how to do it. They, what generally the successful ones do, is they find a way to socially connect with them. Right. Once they do that, then they start setting the team agenda. And that's what's a successful process. At some point, we're going to have to recommend a success. Well, we do recommend several successful processes, but they, they still flounder in this whole process. There were two hands back there. Well, I, I have graduate students, and a lot of them are upfront about what they don't know. I mean, even with this is the hand on a building course, and a student who was like, well, I've never used Blackboard, and she was just terrified with using it. But, but also, students, if, if, if it's if, if we have sessions like this that can only take 30 faculty and we do them twice a year, that's only 60 faculty. That means we don't even have the resources for learning how to use things. When, they, when the system updates, we don't have the resources unless we can find time one-on-one -on -one or we're exploring Blackboard, find out what we don't know, and then try and get help. So I have students in groups, uh, and they're in groups on Blackboards for certain projects. And I was really concerned about one group because it's like this project is, is due, the due date is approaching, and I don't see any activity. So I emailed the group, and they emailed back, oh, we're all here in, in uh, whatever sandwich shop on the plaza. We're all here meeting. We've used email. So they use email to get together. Everybody but one person can make it. That person can call in, but they don't use Blackboard because if we can't, if we have trouble learning, and now the groups I can tell them how to use, but they don't have time. They're full-time working students, professionals, who are in school full-time, and they just want to get the work done. Yeah, I don't think we, we should prescribe that they should use Blackboard tools. Well, we we, we I, don't have a way of monitoring their work. Well, that's but, true. But the key is that how are they going to learn it if we can't learn a lot of it? If, if it's this difficult for us to learn it, how are they going to learn it? What's what? there for them? I, I, I hate to say it. I think we have to have patience because it, it is, we are still learning. And fortunately, the good news, I think, is that Blackboard is getting better and better and better. And but some of the... It upgrades, there's something more that you don't know. That's true. <laughs> that's another <laughs> session. <laughs> that, that's another session. 
You know, I, uh, let me do a, a commercial for Bob and, and the, for FACET because I think that all the faculty member who are interested in education technology and, and the direction of the university for education technology should all be together in FACET and then go, I hate, I, you can burn this section of the tape. Go to the IS department and the instructional technology people and say, here's what we want as teachers. Well, Bob knows how often I was at FACET, but how much running around are we supposed to do in order to get to <laughs> In the midst of the semester, why are you trying to do more? <laughs> you know? I, I will say this. Relatively few people say what we need to have at FACET is thus and so, which is interesting to me. They don't know what's there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we, you know, we're well, still in an evolutionary stage exploring these things, and we don't really know where we're going to go. But we need to keep poking at it, which you're doing, which is a great thing. Yay. Jerry. I was full when I came in this morning, and I was a troublemaker yesterday. And I I'm so glad. In the back of the room, no less. Um, I, I'm actually sort of taking, I, my experience with collaboration has been that um, in real time, um, I get more people into the group. We real time share documents. We're all on in audio at the same time. Um, you know, we, we do an awful lot of things. We chat on the side. We do all of this stuff. Uh, when a new person enters that group that has never had any experience with it before, it takes them seven, maybe eight seconds to get into the technology and to use it appropriately. Um, I'm, I'm sort of amazed at what I'm hearing. Does that? It, it may d depend on the, the culture of the students in your class. Because uh, as we know, we, we get students with all different kinds of learning styles and technology styles and, and, and technology. Yeah. So you're saying basically you have no trouble using Communication, it, educational collaboration t technology. And, and now let me reveal a couple of things. Number one. <laughs> Thank is, God. Is that the qualifier of quote educational technology is is probably the one thing that uh, it's not really there. I use any kind of technology that's available to get a work done ASAP, and 99% of it is freeware, and the other part costs you about twelve dollars a month. Uh, to do it, but there's so many different ways to do it. I think what we're going through is this period of, of tremendous transformation. You already spoke to it, and we're really trying to still sort things out. And here's, a, you know, again, a piece of a tape that we probably don't want to play out loud to. I'm so glad. <laughs> but I used to use Blackboard um, back in 1923 when it first came out. <laughs> and what I, and I haven't used it since you know, the Great Depression, uh, the first Great Depression. <laughs> um, and a lot of it became, uh, a lot of, again, I'll point back to what you were saying, is this transformation from the sage on the stage to the guide on the side. And along with that, Blackboard was built like almost every other application where they came in and said, let me see what you're doing right now and I will try to automate that process. And then all of a sudden, with the technologies going on, you understand that that process is not what you should be doing in the future. And then, you know, again, that transformation. Blackboard was set up to, as basically what? A grade book, initially. You know, and then all this administrative stuff underneath it. Everything that's gone on top of it has just been, ooh, you know, kind of an afterthought. And you look, in, you look at the news this week. Blackboard just bought Angel. Why is that? That's a business strategy to stay up with the market. I mean, they're basically saying, we know our application is a little clunky, hard to use. So I guess the whole point of this is that we sometimes get locked into a momentum and try to extend it, when sometimes we should be jumping onto a completely new curve and, and doing something different. You know, I, I love to, I'm sorry I took the stage, but it's good. Um, there's. Well, now maybe I'll just shut up for a little while. <laughs> no. <laughs> I, 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 just, just to summarize, I think there's this huge paradigm shift where we've got to be so open, so nimble, and go and sit there. I have a client that pays $90,000 a year for their LMS, for their learning management system. 
you know, I find out just over the last few weeks in preparation for this that I can host everything that they want to on Moodle for $15 a month off of GoDaddy. And it'll be orders of magnitude more productive than what they're using right now. But we get locked into this momentum. Right. No, there's a lot of open source uh, learning management systems. I actually use, for my business, I use uh, Clairline, which is another, it's actually from uh, Belgium. And it's an excellent, excellent, it's PHP based. I mean, unfortunately, I am, I want to tell you something, my, my, my bachelor's was in communication arts and theater. I don't know computer programming, but you know what? As teachers, we have to figure this out. We have to figure out what PHP is and what it does and what, what, uh, you know, my, what's the, what, who knows what the database is? What's the big database? My, P, my, my, my SQL. There you go. My SQL. Thank you. But I'm going to disagree with something you said. And that is, no, no. Keep the tape rolling. Now is it, uh, I'm going to disagree that we should throw Blackboard out. Okay, well, I heard a little implication. 1923 was the last time I used Blackboard. But here's the thing, Jerry, is that I use Blackboard as a shell to get to other communication technologies. And be, uh, Wimba, okay, stop the tape. Uh, Wimba, I hated Wimba when it first came out. It was too clunky. It did so many things I didn't want it to do that I paid for my own, well, through my business, my own web communication technology to use in, in, Black, in Blackboard. So basically, all I did was use Blackboard as a portal to get to all of these other communication tools. Which one did you use? It's, you don't even know it. It's, it's one that's based on Flash, and it, it's what, I love it. It's one that I use for my business. Actually, it's a custom, a custom platform. Blue Streak is the, is the brand name on it. But it's very, very, it's very, very, it's wonderful. I love it. Huh? You can get to my uh, email through the Blackboard site <laughs> by going here, and, and I'll, I'll chat with you about it. Okay. I'll be happy to share it with you. But the, but the issue is, is that I think what we need to do is keep pushing, Black, I mean, we need to keep pushing Blackboard to serve us. And the, the nice thing, I hate to say it, I love the administrative part of Blackboard because everybody knows. I apologize for, for projecting. Administrative side is absolutely critically important to do, but what I, my point was just that a lot of these things build up a momentum, and then things. You know, I come from a software development industry, and the worst thing in the world that can happen, and you know, I say this with a smile, is you build an, a, a big application that gets a huge installed base, and then you're almost killed, you know, because you have to maintain that base and you have to be good to that philosophy. And yeah, there are very, very good things. In I mean, you look out in there, you still see thousands and thousands of people employed as COBOL programmers. Yeah. No reason in the world for that. But, you know, we have to look at that and take that momentum and say, where, where can we move it? So yeah. I, I'm going to jump on and say, you got to push, you got to push. Yeah. But at some point, you jump from one curve to another. Yeah. We are the ones that are driving this. Uh, the Blackboard people and the IS people may say, you know, we, we're in charge of this server. It's not. We, the teachers, the people who actually work with students are the ones that drive this. We need to take that responsibility and we need to run with it because we need to, t we need, frankly, not, not to piss people off. My language is really bad, but that's okay. I hope you, we've got the door closed. I, we need to tell people what we need. And we need to not necessarily demand it, but say, we are your best partner because we're the ones that use this for teaching. We are the, we are the people who actually use it. And I'll tell you, I get upset. At, I'm going to say this on tape so people in the IS department hear it. When update, technological updates happen to Blackboard, I think we need to go through a process of having educators decide whether or not this is a technology, first of all, that we should have in Blackboard because it may actually distract from teaching. We need to be more involved in that process and we ha can't be afraid of, get, of saying what's on our mind. Jerry, uh, Bob. I'm curious if anybody knows when the next meeting is of the University Advisory Committee to decide what technology is used by faculty. Why don't you announce it for the tape? Or who knows, you know? Do you know? 
announce it? I don't know. Oh. See, wouldn't it be great if there was a, a, a university-wide email that said, we are gathering tech information on how to use technology to teach. Come to this meeting. Who would go? The majority of us are not. So when I think about this technology, especially when I got started, you know, I was, the learning curve was way, I mean, really steep because I really didn't know a lot about the technology. So to be able to say, it's not doing what I want, I didn't know what I wanted, and it was a part of, maybe I just am not smart enough and I haven't figured this out yet. I mean, it's really priced, really good, really good stuff here. I just don't know how to use it. So I think it's a comfort level where you are with the technology to be able to say, I don't like this about Blackboard, I don't like this about Blackboard. The majority of people in this room are just now starting maybe to use Blackboard. So some of our students are way ahead of us in terms of using Blackboard because they may have been on it for two years at a community college before they got here or a different technology. So being able to be really vocal about what you do and do not want, I think there's a lot of us that say, I'm not sure, maybe uh, I just don't know how to use the technology to its fullest, and well, if I did, the potential too. I mean, Bob, where's the I, actually, what, the what was that? Go ahead and say that again. Well, what's the potential? I mean, uh, it's kind of like I learn a certain, you know, program, but that's already in the past. I mean, right. the, you know, I don't have that one or two year vision that says, okay, this is what's coming up and what I should be learning or moving for. I always feel like I'm reacting in a sense. Right. Bob? I, I was a little too subtle earlier. I, I don't think there is an advisory committee. And I'm <laughs> <laughs> Well, somebody's meeting in a back room somewhere, and I think they're smoking cigars. Maybe more to the point, the question is, has anybody in this room asked their dean and insisted that there be an advisory committee at the university? Because I keep hearing this complaint, but I don't see any action. Well, Bob, I can say that in the libraries, we've tried very hard to come up with a collaborative model of communication with you know, maybe uh, we should have a kind of a bitch session in the Senate. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, honestly, maybe yeah. the Senate can sponsor something like that. That would be the, uh, mm -hmm. you know, in the proper uh -huh. domain of the Senate. You know, since, since we're talking about getting technology to help us teach, how do you enter your grades in your class? I, I have a hundred person, 100 people class, right? I got all my grades automated in my Excel program, but then I have to enter each letter individually by hand. I mean, it would have been much nicer if, you, if I could just copy and paste. Right. You That's know, a, doing you that one do that. at a time. Let me, let me just respond quickly. You, do um, you, can, you can download from Blackboard to Excel and then back up to Blackboard, and you probably need to do it that way so, in, so that you can use Excel conveniently to upload to your grades. Your, to get your grade done the way you want to put it in there and do it in at least a semi-automated fashion. Yeah. No, I got, it, I, I got it in Excel all, all automatically. There's no problem there. But now the, uh, the records office or the registrar's office right, wants the grades in a certain form. And I could only do that one grade at a time. I'd like to. Let's get together and let me show. Let me yeah, there is a way. Uh, Terry. I think it's more than just getting the technology because what I hear you saying is that you want to know how to use it. And maybe you don't know how to use it as fully as some of the rest of us, but you need someone to help you use it yeah. so that you can maximize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, other universities have people that help them design courses and fix things up and learn how to use the technology. And we do too. But I mean, these people really like are there with them doing it. We go, we take a class, or we go downtown and we work with somebody for a couple hours, and then we have to go away and do it all. There's other places that don't have that same model, and I think it works well because just getting the right technology doesn't mean it's going to be used. Or, or, or Terry, fr frankly, come up with instructional designers in the education school that have a practicum part of the class to sit down with faculty on campus to help them with the tech. Great idea. Or computer science people that can work with faculty on um, learning how to do web pages or whatever they want to learn how to do. 
so that we can feel more comfortable. So it's more than just getting the right technology, although you have to have the right technology before you can learn is it but right. I think you have to have both right. parts. Bob we've got a, a question over here or a comment over here too. Yeah. Um, my comment just speaks to any technology where what's it designed for should be the main question and I feel like Blackboard probably was designed for, for the faculty first and foremost and now we're trying to mold that into being usable for students when really it wasn't created with that in mind. <coughs> so I think that's where the disconnect is that we're all struggling with trying to make it work but I don't know that they've even conducted focus groups or research groups with students to right. say, well, what worked for you? What right, didn't? right. And I think a lot of us, um, and Blackboard's one, and technology's one of those things where everyone is going to use it differently. And you cannot have one technology that works for everyone and it's like a magic bullet. It's not, you know. Right. I mean, some people will love the Great Center and some people will love the announcements and some people will hate it. Mm -hmm. So I just think, you know, yeah, what we have is what we have, but then to, to think outside the limitations, I think um, what Jerry mentioned is use other technology. It's just because we have Blackboard doesn't mean we can't use other things. Great. Just, you know. Great. Bob. It strikes me in answer to what you were saying, Terry, that, that number one, call extension 6700, which is ICS, and a lot of times they'll help you with uh, how to. I'm not sure that they'd say that their strength is instructional design, certainly. Right. But another method to my madness is that the more you call them, the more the university will realize that help is needed, maybe to the point where we need more. Yeah, more but you know, that just takes up more and more of our time when we're supposed to be doing other things. Great. <laughs> well, but getting help in five minutes is a lot better than spending three hours at it. If you can get them on the phone. I'm glad we hit a hot button. Let's go back here. <laughs> assigned to you, even if it's the same person from many departments. And they meet just about every month. It's mostly technology discussions, but it could easily be 
become a forum for, hey, I need to do this, how do I do it? Does anybody else know how to do it? Uh, and also, in a sense, raise the bar for the whole discussion university-wide. Maybe the answer is nobody does it, but maybe we ought to be doing it. But a lot of the staff, excuse me, but a lot of the staff don't have that skill set because they were brought on to do the hardware. They weren't brought on to do the software aspect. We need to work collaboratively. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's funny, but, but I think quick, quick comment. a few people around that are doing it in one department or another that maybe could provide help. help Go ahead. You, you know, uh, I, I, I appreciate people telling us all we need to do to, uh, who we need to talk to to learn this. But I, I need to say this. That first of all, teaching is what, 45% of our job. That means we got another 55 to 60% that we have to do. When Blackboard first came out, IT offered um, a five-week session workshop when we, when we were switching from WebCT. A five-week session, you came, what, uh, I think it was two to three hours, like every Monday. I committed the time because I wanted to learn it. I also found that I could use it. I was chairing a, 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 a committee for a national organization that was labor-intensive and <coughs> used a lot of resources. I used Blackboard for it. The next year, and, I, and this was a three-year commitment with this committee. So I used it in my classes. I used it for the committee. The next year, Blackboard had changed. If I hadn't had an international student who had to do an internship, I couldn't have even used right. it for my I understand. committee in the same way. So, and, and the school of education, I'm in the school of education. That's not the place you can develop design here. They don't know either. <laughs> you know, I attended a, what, a web CT workshop, and I was asking questions, and I didn't know this either. And the person leading the, web shop, uh, the workshop said, well, Carolyn, you know, you have to understand, you were one of the first people doing this. So if I was one of the first, yeah. and each time I go away, I can't figure it out. Right. I, I, I know extension 6700, everybody there knows who I am. And those who like me and those who don't. And they have been most helpful. But that is a, a, an, a, an intensive a use, of, that, is, that is a use of my time yeah. that I don't have every time Blackboard, every time technology changes and we don't have resources. We no longer have a series of workshops set up. Right. So when we go to FACET and they say, what do you want to know? We don't know what it's changed to. <laughs> we don't have the questions to ask. I want to say we're, we're actually at the end of our time, and I am. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you something. I am pleased as punch that I made time to come and talk to you folks because we really. This is a good discussion, and I'm so glad that that you and others. We need to say what's on our mind in terms of education because again, I'm going to say the same thing. We are the ones driving the educational use of the technology, not the technologists. And frankly, the design of the collaboration in this class has nothing to do with technology. It has to do with how students interact with each other. And all I did was lay the ground rules. I actually don't even need to know the technology. They're supposed to go figure it out. So what we need to do is come up with strategies, number one, to get involved, and number two, to use the technology to educate. Thank you all very much.